Hey what's up everybody, TrophyNet here and welcome back to Gwent Edge. In this show we talk about specific Gwent cards or interesting decks to play around with. CD Projekt Red recently added 5 new leaders to the game and now that we've had some time to try them out we can take a closer look at each of the new faction leaders and how to use them effectively. We'll start this off with the new Skellige leader, Arnjolf the Patricide. Important note first, all 5 of the new leaders are characters from Thronebreaker Gwen's single player campaign. This entire video is however spoiler free, so we will not be talking about any story details from Thronebreaker itself, so you're safe on that front. If you are interested in Thronebreaker however, you can check out my playthrough right here. Everyone still here? Great, let's go. Let's talk about Arnjolf's abilities first before we head into any synergies and deck options. Arnjolf is the first leader who can actually take a physical presence on the board as a card. Activating his leader ability puts him on your side of the board and he has a whopping 9 power, is doomed, meaning he gets permanently removed from the game when he's destroyed, and has a deploy ability. He spawns 3 deafening sirens of 2 power each on your opponent's matching row. So, meaning if Arnjolf is played on your melee row, the sirens are played on your opponent's melee row. After that, he also damages those sirens by one each, bringing his total point gain to a measly 6, since your opponent gains 3 points with the sirens as well. So on his own, Arnjolf is pretty weak. Only 6 points as a leader ability is lackluster compared to some of the other leaders. However, this is Skellige we're talking about, and he can set up some amazing combos. I really like Skellige as a faction. It might not always be the easiest faction to play with, that was definitely the case in the beta, but it has a really clear team and it just has flair. Skellige is good at two things, inflicting damage and benefiting from both dealing and receiving it. To understand what we can do with Arnjolf, however, we need to talk about a concept that was introduced at release, Bloodthirst. Bloodthirst is used as a limiter on a lot of Skellige cards, both specials and units, and Bloodthirst cards have their abilities boosted based on the amount of damaged enemies on the board. For example, Donagan Hindar deals 2 damage to a selected unit when played. His damage can actually be increased to 5, however, if there are at least 2 damaged enemies on the field, marked by the Bloodthirst 2 modifier on the card. A lot of Skellige cards have this modifier, requiring either one 2 or 3 damaged enemies to achieve their full potential. Bloodthirst was always a bit tricky to pull off however, since it could be easily countered by healing or boosting any damaged units. Arnjolf changes this. Using Arnjolf instantly generates 3 Bloodthirst because of the 3 damaged sirens he plays, allowing you to play any Bloodthirst card at its full potential immediately. See, Higher Bloodthirst levels are hard to maintain because you can usually only damage units while they're being played. Getting to 3 Bloodthirst usually required at least 3 turns, giving your opponent plenty of opportunities to counter and heal his units. Arnjolf does this instantly and allows you to play another card as well, which gives you at least one full power play that cannot be countered. Aside from those pesky usurpers that is, but you know what we think about them. Stupid party poopers. Aside from that, Arnulf also deals 1 damage 3 times, which can boost any uncreate greatswords you have on the field, or Dagur 2 blades for example. But now we're getting into deck composition. I'm going to show you the deck composition I use, but this is by no means the only option. So feel free to mix and match in your own deck. The main focus of this video is to show you how to play an Arnulf and by extension a Skellige deck, and which cards can help you the most. When you're creating a deck with Arnjolf, you should focus on two things. As we said before, dealing damage and capitalizing on that damage with Bloodthirst units and special cards. How you deal that damage is up to you, but you generally get more out of spread out damage using multiple attacks than out of big singular blows. As I said before, two cards are vital to take advantage of this by generating extra points on your side of the board, the Uncrate Greatsword and Dagur Two Blades. Uncrate Greatswords are boosted by 1 every time an enemy on the opposite row takes damage. Dagur 2 Blades does the same, but he needs to be on the melee row to work, while he gets boosted by any enemy taking damage regardless of row. Since they are boosted every time, emphasis on time, an enemy gets damaged, spread out attacks are far superior to get the most out of those units. 
On the damage dealing front, I really like starting with an uncrate Marauder when I don't have the first turn. This usually takes out your opponent's first unit and gives you 6 points for a very cheap 4 cost unit. Otherwise, again, I like to focus on multiple attacks over big hitters. The Dimmon Warship damages the unit 3 times by 1. The Mastercrafted Spear allows you to damage a target by 1 each time you play a unit, giving you great control over damaged enemies. Delirium spreads out 6 damage by dealing it one at a time to random targets on a row. Skellige Storm damages all units on a row by one twice, which can be devastating against decks that spawn a lot of units, like uh, for example monster decks, like the Dead Bugs deck we talked about previously. And last but not least, I like to add two Yennefer cards. Yennefer Conjurer can damage the highest enemies by one each turn, paired with the control damage you can get from the Mastercraft Spear, for example you can easily damage multiple enemies every time. She's also likely to be a prime target for your opponent, however, so I like to protect her with Avalar, whom you can also use to protect your Greatswords or Dagger if you don't have Yennefer in your hand. Avalar himself is also often a target, but because of his 6 power, your opponent usually wastes a high damage dealer or a lock to get rid of him, which technically protects your more important units indirectly. Our other Yennefer card is Yennefer of Vengerberg, I also used her in the Dead Bugs deck from last time, and she can either boost all other units by 2 or damage them by 2, including your opponent's units. The damage is usually preferred in this deck, but if you've cleared the field with your damage dealers before, you can boost your side as well. We also shouldn't forget our Bloodthirst units to take advantage of the havoc we've caused. Bloodthirst units should be kept in your hand last because they're so powerful. Your damage dealers can often manage a battle on their own, but your Bloodthirst can be used to deliver the coup de grace. We talked about Donor on Hinder already with his 5 damage. Cutting Slash can deal 6 damage instead of 4 with 2 damaged enemies on the field. Madman Lugos can damage an enemy by twice the amount of damaged enemies. Changi Fret can knock an enemy with only 1 Bloodthirst. And my favorite of them all is Champion's Charge. Able to deal 5 damage as a base, but with 3 Bloodthirst you can destroy any unit on the field completely. Bloodthirst units have a high base power and low recruitment cost to offset the restriction on their abilities, so you can actually add quite a few of them to your deck. The way you play this type of deck is actually as important as the cards you actually use. Contrary to the nature of Skellige, the best way to play this deck is actually with restraint. Don't deal too much damage at once, don't kill units, which you can leave damaged, and don't play your big hitters, including Arniolf, too quickly. Especially Arniolf should be kept for the final round since he can do so much within a single turn. At the beginning of a match, it's better to react to what your opponent plays than to set up too much. Lure out your opponent's damage dealers and locks by first playing units like the Longship, which is great at creating damaged enemies as well, or playing Avalach, which your opponent will certainly want to take out. Any damage or locks your opponent wastes on cards like that is a counter he can't use against your active cards like the Greatswords, Dagur or Yennefer Conjurer, which can do much more once they can't be taken off the board so easily. Basically, start small, try to stay only a few points above or even below your opponent and don't be too eager to set up your active cards too quickly. At first, I lost a lot of matches because more often than not, I used Arniolf as a quick panic button to take the first round, only to lose the last two rounds because I overplayed my hand too quickly. Only once I tried to keep him at bay until the end and tried to control the board more by damaging units over time, did I start to win more matches with Arniolf. While recording some footage for this episode, I actually won four times in a row. So don't give up on him too quickly, he'll come around and help you out. And that's it for this episode. Got any other tips on how to play Arniolf? Don't hesitate to leave advice in the comment section down below. Next time we'll discuss how to use the Queen of Lyria herself, me. Check me out on Twitter if you want to talk, and if you enjoyed this video why not give it a like, maybe even a sub. Any support is really appreciated. Thank you enormously for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!